just recently a colleague of mine uh, in the workplace was diagnosed with a terminal disease and it was just just like another kick in the guts so to speak and my, my own mother passed away um, in the last 12 months from multiple sclerosis and she'd been fighting that for over 20 years and probably every one of us know people, family members, friends who have passed away prematurely and I don't know about you but it kind of just sort of erodes your faith a little bit when we see so many miracles recorded in the scriptures um, and yet in my heart I thought Lord surely surely this is not what you have meant for your church and I've I guess I've meditated on that over the years and every one of us would know um, people that we have seen as, as genuine people of faith in the church from leadership to um, many different functions in the church where um, you know, they've stood in faith for healing and yet the majority have um, ended up passing on to heaven from you know, those diseases and yet I look through the New Testament and I don't I don't see a church that um, is walking in the same way. In fact, you know, when Jesus came, he said, I only see, I only do what I see the Father doing, which is what Mark was talking about recently. And he says that he went about, he was anointed with the Holy Spirit, and he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed by the devil. All who were sick, everyone that was brought to him, he healed and he was doing the will of the Father. And I just want to um, draw you to the scripture in Mark chapter 7 in verses 24 to 30. I won't read the whole account, but it was about the Syrophoenician woman. She was a Greek woman and her daughter was demon possessed. And she came to Jesus. So she wasn't of the uh, nation of Israel. She was a foreigner. And she came to Jesus and said, Would you deliver my daughter? Would you heal my daughter? And Jesus um, made quite a um, controversial statement, I guess, where he said, First, let the children eat all they want, he told her, for it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to their dogs. How would you like to be the Greek woman that was spoken to that way? And yet she wasn't phased by that. I think Paul even spoke about it recently. She said, yes, Lord, she replied, but even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. And Jesus said, for such a reply you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So he, he responded to her faith and healed her daughter. Now I just want to qualify what healing is. If you go to Matthew chapter 3, verses 23 and 24, um, again, I won't read the whole scripture, but it talks about Jesus going about teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness among the people. And in other places, it says the same thing. He went about teaching, preaching, and healing. It says they brought to him all who were ill with various diseases, severe pain, demon-possessed, who this Greek woman's daughter was, seizures, the paralyzed, and it says that he healed them. So... All of those sicknesses, including deliverance, were 
classified as healing. So in this case with the Greek woman, when Jesus said, it's not right to take the children's bread and toss it to their dogs, he was talking about healing, which as I just read, encompasses every form of sickness, including deliverance. And by that statement, I believe that he was saying healing is the children's bread. And then he was talking about the nation of Israel under the old covenant. But of course now, um, in the book of Ephesians, it says that Jesus, he himself is at peace, who has made the two one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility. And there he was talking about both Jew and Gentile being brought together and made one. So now under the new covenant, we are all classified as the children of God. Those of us who are born again are, are the children of God. In fact, in 1 John, uh, it's recorded how great is the Father's love that He's lavished upon us that He might call us the children of God. And in many other scriptures it talks about us being sons of God. Uh, he predestined us to be adopted as sons according to His will and pleasure. And many, many, many scriptures so that we are now classified as the children of God. And by this very statement, I believe that He's saying that to us, we are His children and the bread of healing belongs to us in the same way that He healed all of the sicknesses. And I know this is, this is just so real because you know, we've got family here that um, are suffering from illnesses that could lead to death. But somewhere, I guess I just, just want to, including myself, just remind us from the scriptures what God says about us and what is available to us and what His intention is for us. That healing belongs to us. And if you look at bread, it's a, it's a staple diet. It's a basic food that we eat um, almost every day, and especially in their time. And if you equate that to healing, um, I believe that he's saying healing is, is a staple diet for us, if you may say. It's, it's um, a basic part of the covenant that he, that he has made with us. It's confirmed in the book of Peter, 1 Peter chapter 2, 24, where it says, He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, so that we, being dead to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. Now that's a, a direct reference to what the prophet Isaiah said in chapter 53, verses 4 and 5, where it says, Surely he took, he prophesied and said of Jesus, Surely he took up our infirmities, carried our sorrows, yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. He prophesied that hundreds of years before. Then Jesus fulfilled it, as we read in Matthew chapter 8. It says, When the evening came, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed, and he drove out the spirits with a word and healed all the sick, in order to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. He took up our infirmities and carried our diseases. And Peter restates what God has said for us, by whose stripes you were healed. It talks about our sins being taken in his body. And the wounds that he received were for our healing. That it's part of the covenant, the atonement. The atonement. 
that healing is the children's bread. Healing belongs to us. It says, he says, I am the Lord, I do not change. He is the same yesterday, today and forever. The same God who is our Father, who declared in Exodus to the nation of Israel, I will not allow any of these diseases to come upon you that I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord, your healer. He is the same God who demonstrated through Jesus that he's still the healer today. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, our healer. And again, I state, he said, I only do what I see the Father doing. Jesus was carrying out the will of his Father. Now when his disciples said, show us the Father, he said, haven't I been with you long enough that you haven't recognized the Father? If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Because Jesus was doing exactly what the Father wanted him to do. So as we've read, with his stripes we are healed. In 3 John verse 2, John says, I pray that you may enjoy good health and prosper, even as your soul prospers. To the leper, who's recorded in Mark chapter 1 verse 41, who came to Jesus and said, are you willing to heal me? And Jesus said, I am willing. It is my will for you to be healed. Because it's the children's bread. But even more so, because we are, we are sons, we're subjects under a new covenant, and it says that we come under better promises under the new covenant than the old. So if, if God said, I'll not allow any of these diseases to come upon you, because I'm the Lord your healer, how much more the promise under the new covenant? I don't see any place where Jesus refused to heal anybody, except it said that he, he couldn't do many miracles in his own hometown because of their unbelief. Now, maybe, maybe there, are, there is an aspect of unbelief in us because, you know, as I said, when you, when you see so many people die from sickness around you, it starts to erode your faith and your belief to some degree, just confessing my weakness. And yet I believe that he wants us to remind ourselves and just continually go to his word to remind us that that isn't the best for us. So how do we appropriate healing? How do we receive healing? Well, I've just listed a few things which I don't believe are, are comprehensive and complete, but just some things that I believe can help us, including myself. And um, the first one is just simply by faith, purely by faith, believing what we hear. And we know that in Romans it says faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. So the more that we wait on Him, even these times tonight when we worship and as we talked about the fellowship that he wants to have with us. Maybe he speak, he'll speak a word to us in our quiet times or in our times of worship where he speaks a word to us that will give us faith to receive. And even tonight we have opportunity with communion and we've got some oil here to uh, pray for any that are sick. Communion is, is another way to receive healing. In, in Corinthians, it says that there are some that are weak and sick and even passed away because they haven't discerned the Lord's body. Now, I believe that's talking about having an understanding of what communion is all about, not just a remembrance of what Jesus has done for us, but it also talks about a participation in the body and the blood of Jesus. If you want to ask some more, more questions about that, I would um, just commend my wife here, who's done a bit of a study on it, and uh, 
she calls it a superfood um, because it, it says in the scriptures that, that it's food indeed, to, to have communion is actually food, sustenance. And what does it refer to? Does it refer to the, the body of Jesus when he was walking on the earth? Or are we talking about the resurrected Jesus in, in that state? What are, we, who, what are we participating in? What is the food that we're receiving? Is it the glorified Jesus? If it is, if that's our faith, man, there's uh, communion, if we see it in the right light, um, can bring healing to our bodies as well. But I won't elaborate any more on that. Also, in Proverbs chapter 4, verses 20 to 22, it says, My son, attend to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Don't let them depart from your sight. Keep them in the midst of your heart because they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh or medicine to all their flesh. And if we read that carefully, we'll see that If we give attention, more attention to the Word of God, if we listen more readily and more carefully, if we don't let those words disappear from our vision, our sight, and that, that can be with our spiritual eyes, and if we keep them in the midst of our heart, if we meditate on them in our heart, then they can be a source of medicine or, or health or healing to our bodies. You know, we, live in a, we live in a world where there's so many distractions. I put my hand up for that. I mean, I, I, day by day, so I thought, how do I make more time? You know, because there, there's so many demands in so many different areas. Yeah. But if we, if we can learn to push some of those things aside, and attend to his word, then healing can come that way. Uh, I don't know if any of you know Derek Prince, he's passed away now, but he actually does a teaching on this very thing and um, gave a testimony of a time that he was in a military hospital in um, the Middle East at the time before Israel became a nation and he had a chronic eczema on his feet and hands, I think it was, and he was in hospital for 12 months. And when he was reading the Word of God and seeking Him for healing, this was the scripture that God gave him. And he began to read through the Bible with eyes of faith and healing. And it took some time, but as he took God's Word as medicine, he applied it to his life after every meal. He walked out of that hospital healed because there was no um, remedy there. Another one that may hinder our healing is unforgiveness. If we hold on to unforgiveness. Jesus said, for if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will, all, will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. And I know there's a lot of um, situations that rise and conflicts and whatever, whatever they may be and none of us are immune to them. We all have the potential to, um, in situations where we can hold unforgiveness towards somebody. I know I've, I've had that struggle at different times and um, I'm sure that if I ask for a show of hands, there's probably many of us that have had a struggle with forgiveness. But that is, that is something that is non-negotiable. If, if we're not able to forgive, well then we're not forgiven. And it actually puts us in torment. It's good day. Forgiveness is also it's linked to healing because in Psalm... I believe that healing is, is, is a product 
of um, our sins being forgiven. Because in Psalm 103, verses 1 to 3, we all know, bless the Lord of my soul, all that is within me, bless his holy name. Forget not all his benefits, who forgives all of our sins and heals all of our diseases. We've, we've often separated that in the past, but I wonder whether they're not meant to be held together. Uh, because in in Mark chapter 2, 1 to 12, most of you have seen that account of the paralytic who was brought by four of his friends to Jesus and they broke through the, the roof. And he said to the, to the guy, your sins are forgiven. Hang on a sec. He's sick. Why? Um, and the Pharisees, you know, they objected to it and um, said, who is this man that he would forgive sins? And he said, what's easier to say your sins are forgiven or um, take up your, your mat and walk? Because I believe they're linked together. As we have sins forgiven, healing comes to us. It's good. It's good. So in the book of James, um, I'm just going to conclude with that and another scripture. For all of us who are beneficiaries of the new covenant, all of us who are described as sons or called sons, who are called children, who are joint heirs with Jesus, who are in Christ Jesus, that's what the scriptures say who are baptised into the name of Jesus, who are declared to be king and priests, these are all scriptures you can look up, who are holy and blameless before God, who are addressed as children of God, as I read in 1 John. This is what James says to us. Is anyone of you in trouble? He should pray. Is anyone happy? Let him sing songs of praise. Is anyone of you sick? He should call for the elders of the church to pray over him and anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord and the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise him up. If he has sinned, he will be forgiven. There it is again. Sins forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. The, just so that the confirmation of that is in 1 John, chapter 1 from verse 5, just read it through. This is the message we've heard from him and declare to you, God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him, yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live by the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus his son purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make Him out to be a liar and His word has no place in our lives. My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have one who speaks to the Father in our defence, Jesus Christ the Righteous One. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. So we still have the propensity to sin, but if we keep it in the light, that's the key. Keep things in the light. If we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And that is in line with what James is saying. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so you may be healed. That that can hinder our healing as well. If we're just holding things back, we know we've 
there are things that we've been doing that we know haven't been pleasing, then we need to bring them to the light so that we can receive healing.